Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go. All your weather coverage in today's weather forecast, we are going to be talking about record high temperatures being achieved later on this week and into the weekend, followed by a major pattern change, but a complicated pattern change as we go into the middle of February. We'll dive right into the details in today's weather forecast. So let's waste no time, everyone. Good morning out there to everybody. Hope everybody's having a great Tuesday morning so far. Looking at our low temperatures this morning, waking up and heading out the door, temperatures are pretty pretty seasonable to above normal across the north. We're waking up to temperatures into the 20s and 30s out here. A little bit colder across the northeast, especially interior New England. That's where we have laid down a decent snowpack with our recent snowstorms. Temperatures from northern Maine, northern Vermont, New Hampshire, and down through portions of upstate New York are actually into the single digits and teens waking up this morning. And that is due to that heavy snowpack on the ground there from northern Maine through northern Vermont, New Hampshire, and upstate New York with a couple of feet uh, of snow on the ground across this region, enhancing some of that cold air this morning. But we quickly warm up across the middle of the country into record territory in some areas perhaps. This afternoon, we're up into the 50s here across the upper Midwest. 60 degrees could be achieved in Rapid City, South Dakota this afternoon. 62 down here into the Dodge City, Kansas region and then 66 for an afternoon high in the Dallas Fort Worth area this afternoon. So definitely some warm air moving north. But if you like detailed weather breakdowns across North America and the tropical weather season upcoming through 2024, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. And I would love to hit 100,000 subscribers by spring. And each and every one of you can help me get there by subscribing to the channel down below and also pressing the like button down below. It helps out more than you know. So let's look here at the past five days with our precipitation out west. If you haven't heard, we have an atmospheric river that is moving into Southern California. We had a high risk, back to back, high risk days of flash flooding across the Los Angeles region, down and toward Long Beach in the Santa Barbara area into Southern California. And here's the past five days with our precip in general out west. Notice California, the state of California has gotten hit hard by the heavy precipitation. Other areas have seen some heavier rainfall out west across here, the Idaho region, western Montana, down through Utah, Arizona there, and even Colorado has seen their fair share of precip over the past five days. But in general, look at around the Los Angeles region. This is in Southern California, Santa Barbara, Los Angeles, and Long Beach. A lot of these areas seeing double digit rainfall totals over the past five days, and this has led to some significant flash flooding and runoff from the rainfall across these regions. Now, looking at the general weather pattern, zooming out the picture and showing you what we see for the weather today, high pressure ridge across eastern Canada with the pinks and the reds over here, that typically implies above normal temperatures, especially this time of year with such a strong high pressure system and also drier weather. There's our strong low pressure system or trough across the California coast and the desert southwest. That typically implies below normal temperatures for this time of year and also some more active weather in the form of rain and snow. So let's look here at our atmospheric river as we see it today. Here's our precipitable water values in inches and you can see that atmospheric river lifting up from the central and eastern Pacific Ocean all the way up into Southern California, the Baja of California, and into southwestern Arizona. And then as we go into your Wednesday, notice that starts to shift a little bit further east, but also more importantly, weaken during that midweek time frame on Wednesday. So looking at our current weather conditions across the country, here's as, as we see it now, we have a lot of rain moving across Southern California over already saturated and flooded soils here and we continue to see some heavier snow up across portions of Nevada north of Las Vegas and across the Pacific Northwest in general this morning going through today heavy snow up here in Nevada the southern Sierras getting some heavy snow as well some of that snowfall spreading up into Idaho western Montana Utah western Colorado and northern Arizona but the heavy rains will continue across southern California and into western Arizona 
Arizona, including the Phoenix region, San Diego getting into Los Angeles, the Santa Barbara area continuing to see heavy rain through today. Going into tonight, we still see that moisture surge moving up into the desert southwest. So higher elevation snows, lower elevation rains across this region. Phoenix getting some heavier downpours as we go into tonight. Then going into Wednesday, very heavy snows all across the ski resorts, all across the Rockies here. Nice snowfall there as we go into your Wednesday time frame. But in general, here is our total precipitation in inches through Wednesday night on February 7th. And you can see additional rainfall totals out here across the desert southwest. And this is already oversaturated soils. We have a slight risk for flash flooding into the Los Angeles region, getting closer to San Diego today into Wednesday. Some of this could move into western and central Arizona, including the Phoenix region, so keeping an eye on that over the next 24 hours. Then as we go into Wednesday, Thursday, around the Phoenix area, we have a marginal risk of flash flooding, and that does also occur across the southern side of the Los Angeles metroplex and into southern California Wednesday into Thursday for flash flooding. So keeping an eye on that. Now looking at the snowfall, as we mentioned, there's going to be heavy snow in the higher elevations across the Rockies. A lot of these ski resorts out here getting some decent snows through Wednesday night. Additional accumulations over a foot in many areas from Idaho getting into Nevada, Utah, western Colorado getting into northern Arizona there. And it's northern Arizona that gets some very nice snowfall. The Flagstaff area, we could be seeing one to two feet of snow in some of these areas in northern and northeastern Arizona, north of the Phoenix Metroplex as we go through Wednesday night. So definitely some big snows in Arizona. And looking at those impacts as well with the snowfall, if you are traveling out west across the Rockies or just the Intermountain West in general, just make sure to take it slow on those roadways. You could be turning from rain and then you go up in elevation and turning right into heavy snow in a short amount of time. So just make sure to take those roadways nice and slow out there out west. But in general, our folks out east, we don't forget about you. We have some record territory temperatures entering into mid and late week and even into the weekend. So here's on Wednesday, notice a well above normal temperatures here centered across southern and southeastern Canada, but also the Midwest, the Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley region. And then as we go into late week around that Friday time frame, we just continue to see a nose of warm air moving into the eastern U.S. And looking at those temperatures on Wednesday, this is tomorrow, and you can see 50s moving up into the Midwest there, 40 degree line going all the way up into the international border between Canada and the United States. Then as we go into Thursday, now Thursday could be the warmest day for highs across the Midwest, the Great Lakes, and the Ohio Valley. We could be closing in on 60 there in Des Moines at 59 degrees, 55 in Omaha, and into the 50s there in the Chicagoland area, and getting very close to 50 from Green Bay down towards Milwaukee maybe just into the upper 40s, but still very warm for this time of year. Then as we go into Friday, notice the Ohio Valley, Indianapolis, 60 degrees, St. Louis, 62, 61 in Lexington, Kentucky, and 62 over here into Charleston, West Virginia, as we go into Friday. And then it doesn't stop there. As we go into the weekend, we see those above normal temperatures push east, but that includes more of eastern Canada and the east coast of the United States Saturday into to that Sunday time frame, the 10th and 11th of February, and peeking into those temperatures on Saturday, notice we got more 50s in play across the Ohio Valley, the Mid-Atlantic, and yes, 60 degrees along that I-95 corridor Saturday into Sunday, and let's zoom it in and show you here, New York City, around 60 degrees for a high on Saturday, that moves up into the Hartford region, Boston into the middle 50s, a little cooler inland with that snowpack, but that snowpack we showed you earlier earlier on in the video is going to be melting in a big way with temperatures well into the 40s here from Maine, back through Vermont, New Hampshire, and upstate New York Saturday, and even into that Sunday time frame. So definitely seeing a lot of snow melt out there as well. So let's look ahead to the middle of February in a very complicated setup. So let's explain this complication to you real quick. Looking at the PNA, this is your Pacific North American pattern, and notice it is positive, and it's likely to remain positive 
positive going through the middle of February. Looking at the NAO, the North Atlantic Oscillation, that is currently neutral and actually is trending negative. And that's important for our storm track across the eastern U.S., and the AO, the Arctic Oscillation, is currently neutral, but that is going to trend way negative by that second and third week there into February. So let's explain this a little further. This is what we call the MJO, the Madden-Julian Oscillation. And typically when you're in a Phase 7 and heading into a Phase 8, that typically is one of the more favorable areas where we see more action of our storms moving across North America and into the United States. So looking at our 500 millibar height anomalies here, this is going into next week. This is Monday, February 12th through Friday, February 16th. And notice there's the, there's the positive PNA out west. And that typically means we have a ridge up into Alaska and the Western Canadian provinces and also a ridge across the Pacific Northwest. Notice this blue line shifting down into the Great Lakes, the Midwest and the Northeast. That is your AO, the negative AO, bringing that colder air from the Arctic further to the south. And then there's that negative NAO, the negative North Atlantic Oscillation across the North Atlantic Ocean, setting up that favorable storm track with the lower pressure underneath of that ridging across Canada. So a very complicated pattern there. Now let's talk about even more complication. So yesterday we were talking about a video update in the afternoon, how we did have a big storm system that we're looking at on the models, a big winter storm that was showing across the Midwest, the Great Lakes region with some severe weather on the eastern side, the warm side across the southeast and the Deep South. This was yesterday's run on 205 on February 5th. Now as we go to this morning's run on 206, February 6th, notice it's shifted that a lot farther south and it's a lot weaker of a system. So there's a lot of variability in our operational weather models and I just wanted to explain that to you. Now let's look at it a little bit further. This is the Euro Ensemble members. This is all the members, all 51 members or so, combining for an average mean of our low pressure system as we go into Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday during that system early next week. So here's Sunday. This is the 11th low pressure center averaging around the Arkansas region, around the Little Rock, Memphis area, if you will. Then as we go into Monday, very strong low on the ensemble members, pushing it up near Chicago and the South Bend, Indiana area at a 974 millibar low on Monday. Now, looking at the ensemble snowfall here, notice it brings that snow signal across the Midwest and the Central Plains through the Great Lakes and interior New England and also up into southeastern Canada between Sunday the 11th and Tuesday the 13th. And there's a signal there for that storm. And not a big signal, but enough of a signal there that we have to keep an eye on it. Now let's go to the GFS ensemble members. This is the same thing as well. Around 51 members put into this as well. And you can see around on Sunday that low is a little further east than the Euro ensemble guidance. It averages around northern Mississippi, around Jackson, in Mississippi, Tupelo, these areas here across northern Mississippi on Sunday, then shifts it more into the mid-Atlantic instead of up into the Midwest and Great Lakes. So just looking at the two main ensemble members, the Euro and also the GFS, it has a lot of variability in the track of this system and it really just comes down to the energy phasing together. And notice, you can see the snowfall footprint is there, but it's not very pronounced. So there's a little bit of a signal here as well across the Central Plains, the Midwest and the Great Lakes, Southeastern Canada and interior New England with this ensemble run. And we're gonna take it one step further. Let's look at the national blend of models. Let's put all of the weather models together and gives you an average here through Tuesday the 13th of February. Notice it's picking up on that footprint here from the Central Plains through the Midwest into the Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley at times, but then up into southeastern Canada and interior New England with that storm track on the northwest side you'll have heavy snow on the southeast side you'll have heavy rain and severe weather potential and then as we go in towards that third week in february the 16th through the 23rd that signal for the positive pna continues out west we have that negative ao the arctic oscillation colder air pushing out of canada into the united states and that negative NAO, the negative North Atlantic Oscillation, continues across the North Atlantic Ocean, and that will continue to make our storm track further south 
and east across the United States, supporting more snowstorm potential as we go deeper into February. And looking at that as well, you can see a lot more snowfall starting to uh, be printed out across the northeast, the mid-Atlantic, and perhaps maybe even the Carolinas and Tennessee as we get towards later February. We'll keep an eye on that. I just wanted to explain the complication to you folks, make it understand that there is a lot of moving parts here. There may be a big winter storm as we go in toward early next week, or there may not be. We'll keep an eye on it. Everything you see right now, take it as a grain of salt and we'll keep you updated right here on this channel. And if you wanna stay updated, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and also uh, hit the like button down below. It helps out more than you know. Share this video with friends, family, and on social media, and I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their Tuesday out there.